You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. Woohoo! Over the last two weeks, we rewired our entire boat and managed to add an amazing 1,350 amp hours of 12 volt lithium batteries. Now that we're about 90% of the way done with this technical crap, we're at a stopping point where we can finally start working on something that requires a little more brute force and redneck engineering. So we raised our boom up an entire foot so that we can start working on the next project. And that is making one of the most massive hardtop dingy davit aluminum structures ever to be on a monohull ever. ever, 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 ever. Well, at least that we know of. I'm sure some of you are thinking, what a waste of unnecessary money. Well, must I remind you, we are sailing around the world and I want to do it in style, but not just style. I also want to do it in comfort. And there's a lot more benefits to adding a hard top than just flexing on our neighbors. Yes, we overpaid for the boat. And yes, we have spent a pretty penny fixing it up. But we have made a reasonable list as to why this upgrade is unarguably justified. Number one is shade. On a boat, you get plenty of sun, which leads to skin cancer. So you want to be protected. Well, a bimini top can do that, but ours is going to have to be fabricated because Ralph's so tall. Although, a bimini is still going to be cheaper, which leads us to our second point. We want to add dinghy davits to raise and lower our dinghy to extend the life of it, as well as preventing easy theft. Okay, so we'll put an arch on the back. The arch can hold solar panels, although not enough solar panels to recharge this massive battery bank that we just installed to be as off-grid as possible. So we'd have to attach more solar panels to this flimsy bimini top, which would be pretty inconvenient if a storm rolled through because a bimini top is not that strong. So why not just extend this arch to the front of the Dodger, which will give you enough real estate for an epic solar array, add a hard top that's strong enough to walk on and keep everyone shaded, add some icing glass to keep everyone dry, and make it strong enough to withstand heavy storms. Not only is this super sick, but it will also add value on the back end. And on top of that, when we pull up to an anchorage, I can hit a butt naked cannonball off the top deck and show them how hot my girlfriend is. All right, so I'm about to make a jig for the hard top. Why a jig? Well, it's because we are building it off site and we need to replicate the boat so that we don't have to haul the boat out and stay in a yard. This would be at least a three or four week job working all day and all night, which would get pretty pricey. And speaking of price, we tallied up all the costs for the materials and it seemed like we were gonna be able to pull this off until we had to figure out where we were gonna build this at. And plus, we have a ton of projects left. So if we can get someone building this, we can get out on the water a lot faster. The only problem was gonna be finding someone we could trust to do it. Unfortunately, we live in a world full of underqualified contractors that charge a premium for their subpar work. And the first three or four guys that came out only proved my point. But then our prayers were answered. This is Jay, and Jay is the man. He came out, I showed him all the detailed drawings I had done, and he immediately started telling me what was gonna work and what wouldn't. We started spitballing ideas back and forth, and he gave me advice on how to make it better. Then he took his phone out and showed me other jobs he's done, which only shows his skill level and capabilities. And on top of that, he is a one-stop shop. Not only is he gonna build the frame, but he's also gonna build the fiberglass hardtop and we're gonna do a fold-down fiberglass transom. So after finalizing the design, we shook hands and he agreed to knock some money off if I built a jig so he could build it at his shop. This jig took some serious brain power to construct. We had to make it lightweight, portable, and very strong. Don't let the weird shape and scrap wood fool you. There is a ton of engineering that went behind this. 
We got it done in a little over a day, but the majority of that time was spent double checking measurements and making sure that we were on the money. The last thing we needed was for Jay to weld up the frame, bring it to the boat, and it not fit right. So each measurement was crucial, and one wrong measurement could affect the entire project. So what's the concept behind this crazy contraption? Well, our final design called for 12 attachment points, and this is tricky because every point is sitting at a different height, a different angle, and tilted in a different direction. Now we thought of all different types of materials to use, but at the end of the day, wood was going to be the cheapest and most accurate, especially because we had an 11 foot span and we wanted this thing to be rigid when we took it off. However, this was going to be a massive structure, so we decided to make two separate jigs so they'd be easier to transport. From a side point of view, it looked like this. Now we knew when we set this up in the shop that we'd have to figure out the difference in the height between the two jigs, so we wanted to make sure that the top surfaces were completely level. So we rough cut the frame to size and then used these corner brackets that we made on a table saw to make sure that everything was squared off and sitting at a perfect 90 degrees. Once we had the frame reaching all the places where pads were gonna be, here's how we got the angle of the pads. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm beefing this up. So my bracket's gonna sit in this area. You notice how the left side of this board is on the center of this bracket. So what I'm gonna do is beef up this side. The wider we make this, the more accurate this angle is gonna be. See, it's got a left to right drop. So if I only did it in a spot this close, you can see I barely have much of an angle here. But when you spread them out this wide, you get a lot more accurate reading. So I'm gonna tack these two on, and then on the underside of it, I'm gonna put a board, and that's gonna be my angle so my fabricator knows where to mount. But before I tack those on, I shimmed up the front corner so that the top of the jig was level like we talked about earlier. That is the spot right there. Cool. This way you're not trying to cut a two by four perfectly, so this settles all those problems by just tacking a piece here and tacking a piece here. It gives you your slope this way as well as this way. Okay, I had to put some, uh, a couple more that hit right here. There's gonna be a bar that goes from here to up to the top. So that gives a nice angle to prevent everything from uh, wiggling around. The front was the same exact concept. We still made sure the top was level, the pads were angled, and the rest of the plywood is to keep everything square and stationary. Once we were done, we traced exactly where the pads needed to go. Then we set them in place and measured the distance between them as well as the distance between corner to corner. And then at nighttime, we took a laser and measured the difference in height between the two jigs, which would give us all the measurements we needed to set the jigs up at Jay's shop. Rafa has been super busy building and designing this new hardtop that we're going to have built. Jay is here right now with Raf. They're finishing up some final measurements before we take the two frames that we have built to Jay's shop, and then he can start building the frame on top of that. We clearly need a new dinghy. We took both the jigs and loaded them up on the dinghy so we could take them to Jay's truck. However, the process of finishing the jigs was only halfway done. We're here at Jay's house slash workshop where he is building the hardtop and the frame for our hardtop for the boat. And we got quite the welcoming committee. Come here. He, he came straight hearing. out of Star Wars. As we pulled up, we were treated with an awesome surprise. Jay had already started construction on the hardtop. Oh Whoa. yeah. It's this big. thing is massive. As excited as we were to see the progress, we couldn't help but to be nervous that we were putting a lot of money towards something that could affect our boat in a negative way. I mean, this is like adding another sail in an area where you don't want another sail. But we're too deep now to turn back, so Chewbacca here says to cowboy up and do what you came here to do. And that is to take the two jigs that we had just made and build them in the opposite direction so that Jay can weld the frame directly on top of those. All of yours, this is what you built. The entire frame is relying on our ability to make accurate measurements. We need to rebuild this thing as close as possible or else when we take this to the boat, it's not gonna fit right. 
we have to make sure everything's square, everything's level, and everything is the same exact distance as it was on the boat. So when you build two jigs, you have to be extra accurate because it's kind of like the whisper game where someone whispers in your ear and then 10 people down the line, it comes out as something else. Well, each step of this process has to be perfect for this frame to fit exactly like it's supposed to. And there's a lot of places that we can make an error. Pull that out of the way. Boom. And there's the boat. This See, looks way bigger. All the squares are where the pads go. Yeah. Four by three. And they're in the exact spot. We got it down to the uh, 16th of an inch in every direction. So let's hope that our numbers are accurate. Yes. It's really eye-opening how big this whole structure is going to be. Like Jay said, we're going to have a pole barn on top of our boat. <laughs> Let's give Sasha just a how big is it? Oh yeah. Oh my. It's gonna be back to the that bucket back there. About here. That's how big it's gonna be. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a big frame. Massive. Yeah. All right, now I think we're gonna have to upgrade our keel. Or else <laughs> our boat's just gonna tip over. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. All right, Jay. No problem. <laughs> hey, thank you for all the help. No problem. That was awesome. While Jay started welding up the frame, we had multiple other projects to attend to. So, right now we're addressing this ugly ass table. It's big, it's bulky. And these ears, or whatever they're called, are out. Leafs. Leafs, you can't get around it. And it's unnecessary. Anytime we eat outside, we always just hold the plate and sit around and talk. So, what we're doing is knocking this out and we're putting in a real nice coffee table. This is an old office desk that we're gonna cut up, re-sand and finish, and it's gonna be our new cockpit coffee table. Slash dance platform. Slash dance platform. Right. <laughs> Let's rip it out. See the smile. <laughs> Stay still and smile. <laughs> Let's go. Throughout the entire rehab, this table has served as an amazing workbench, but it's gotta go. Oh, shit. Damn, I barely did that. Okay, that's not funny, but that's funny. Well, we could have sold it for like $400, now we can. Shit. Now let's go to Sasha. This is fast in the moment. Well, Sasha's way worked pretty good. We got the table off, admired the new size of the cockpit. Wow, look how open the boat is. Wow, this place is big. Wow. Wow, we and made a stencil for the new table, but that was gonna have to be a project for another day. We've got Alexi and John from Nancy and Underwoods here to check the rigging. Something I should have done when I bought the boat, but I got a little trigger happy. As we've been finding out, this boat has had a rough past, and the last thing we wanted to do was fix up the boat and have the rig fall down on all of our hard work. So we hired some professionals because neither of us really knew what a rig inspection consisted of. We got one crack so far. One crack in the lower cap shroud, I think that's what he said. They basically laid their eyes on every fitting and wire, taking a scotch bright pad to remove any of the surface rust to get a good visual look at all of the fittings. Then they came out a couple days later with all the parts we needed. We got the boys back out from Nansen Underwoods and they are replacing both side stays. We had a hairline crack in one of them, just replacing it, just better be safe and sorry, even though it's just a very small crack. And they said when you replace one, you gotta replace the other side. That's what we're doing. Once they got the new shrouds installed, they tensioned the rig, and once the rig was tensioned, we checked all the doors to make sure they were still closing properly. They tightened up the backstays as well and checked the rake of the mast to make sure it had the right amount of bend. So we found some sweet solar panels on eBay. We reached out to the guy and he said he'd take $325 a piece, so we are here to try to take advantage of that deal. Let's go check it out. Now these panels are the LG Neon 2s and they're one of the most efficient panels you can get. Now this guy buys them by the shipping container and sells them by the truckload. And it turns out he had six of them sitting in a shop taking up space. So we got a hell of a deal. And not to mention, I designed the frame to fit this exact size panel. Got him. Got him. Even cheaper than we thought. So we just hit the jackpot. <laughs> $250 a panel. Yeah, $265 a panel is what we paid and brand new, like we got a quote for what, like $530 a piece? 
Yeah. We got these panels half off, basically. Our buddy Jeff let us use his garage to store them until we could take them up to Jay's house to see if they fit the frame. How long has it been? Two weeks? One Two week? weeks. Two weeks since he started. Yeah, since he started. Today we're gonna help him figure out where all the wires are gonna run and we're gonna make all of the holes so we can run wires through the hard top. And we wanna see it, so. Yeah, we yeah. wanna, we wanna prepare to ourselves. Now. For this project. <laughs> it's been tough to sleep thinking we're paying all this money and it could just get blown off that fast. Yeah, so. <gasps> oh my god. Here we go. There it is. Right there. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got the welcome committee. Why, hello. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Hi. <laughs> I thought you were gonna run over Chewbacca. Mojo, whatever. There you are. Oh my goodness. As we walked in, it was very exciting to see the frame starting to come together. But I'd be lying if I didn't say, it looks way bigger than we ever imagined. And we're beginning to wonder if we went a little bit overboard. Jay keeps telling us to calm down that it'll get smaller once we set it on the boat. But when we walk in and it's half the size of his workshop, well, it's kind of alarming. Now I feel pretty confident about the measurements we took, but the only thing I'm really nervous about is the amount of windage that this thing is gonna take. And will it affect the performance of the boat? Today is the mission for the boys. Just me and Jay. Oh nice, a parking ticket. So today and tomorrow are kind of big days for the boat. Raf is currently out in West Palm helping Jay finish up the frame. So in the meantime, while he's out there, I'm going to take down the Bimini and the Dodger because we gotta get rid of that so that way we can easily install the frame tomorrow when it arrives. <laughs> All right, so I am at Jay's and he's got this thing pretty much welded up. It is looking spectacular. The frame was about 90% of the way done. He had the cross members welded on and there was only a few more areas that he needed to weld which required us flipping the frame over so he didn't have to weld upside down. Since there was only two of us, we grabbed a pulley and managed to flip it over. It was a lot lighter than I expected. I would say about 150, maybe 200 pounds but we got it done and got to work. Throughout the whole process, I couldn't help but to admire Jay's workmanship. I mean, he never cut corners and always spent the extra hours to make sure that the job was done right. Every weld was neat, every cut was thought out and precise, and he followed my design to a T and even added to it, making it even better. He communicated throughout the entire job and there's really not that many people I can highly recommend but Jay is definitely one of them. I'll put his contact information down below. I gotta say, throughout the whole process of the build, he became more of a friend than someone I hired. But anyways, after Jay finished the final welds, we flipped it back over and loaded it on the trailer. We used the two wooden jigs that we had built to mount it on the trailer and secured it the best way we could. Jay was gonna drive it down tomorrow and we were gonna see if it fits. <laughs> Good work, my dude. <laughs> Looks great. It, All right, it's the morning we're gonna install our hard top solar frame. Not the hard top, just the frame itself. We got Sasha whipping up a 
awesome breakfast. Yes. Okay, and we managed to round up a crew. Good morning. Good morning. We got Hilt, Dre, and Ayana, and uh, we're about to do some sketchy shit. So here we've got the boom swung out and we're using our topping lift as a temporary backstay. We've got it tied to the deck and then the topping lift really tight. And then we've got the main halyard coming down to this side acting as the left backstay. These boys are about to loosen the backstays and um, see if our mask falls. Ready? I did not, sorry, <laughs> wait. That. I did not realize that's that what we are doing uh, right now. So right now we're taking some electrical tape. We just had our rigging tuned. When we undo this, we want to put it back exactly the same tightness that it is now. So we're just going to take and mark these threads with some electrical tape so we know right where we need to back it down to. Sweet. Let's loosen them up. We've got both back stays really, really loose and they're just hanging on by a thread right here. So when we pull up, we can undo one at a time. Sasha? Yeah? How is Breakfast it coming? Breakfast is coming along just wonderfully. Uh, Jay's waiting, we're about ready to go. Oh, okay, I'll stop this for now. Dre and Ayana are releasing the mooring. And Jay is over there, he's waiting for us. We are loose. This is the first time I've driven it in like eight months and only my second time driving it. It was now the moment we've been anticipating for the last three weeks. As we headed over towards the wall, our nerves grew. Was this going to be way too big for the boat? Is it going to affect the way we sail? Or was it going to be a complete waste of money? We pulled up to the public ferry dock a little later than we had planned on. The ferries were going to start running in about 20 minutes, so we had to hurry. Good job. Oh We're almost there. Look at that thing. Woo, woo. What's up, Jay? These are looking hot. So far, so good. What you need? You got it unscrewed? This bad boy's loose. It's sick, right? Yeah. Ayana undid the port side backstay, and the rig was still standing. It was now the moment of truth. As we inched closer and closer, the frame didn't get any smaller. Was this actually going to fit? Were all the pads going to hit exactly where they needed to? Or were we going to have to haul it an hour north back to Jay's house, cut it up, and rethink our entire design? We eased the frame onto the boat so that way we could reattach our port side backstay. Once that was connected, we could now detach the starboard backstay and pass it through the center of the frame. Once they were both attached, we set the frame down. However, it was sitting on our stainless stanchions, and we wouldn't know if it fit right until we cut the stanchions to see how it falls in place. But this would have to be done on anchor, because the ferries were going to be here any minute. We headed back across the river to the anchorage. We had to pick up Jay and get ready for the final test. All right, so now we're marking the stainless. We have, we're uh, eliminating this stainless rail and this aluminum rail is gonna replace that. And then right here, we're gonna cut it put a bracket and that's going to bolt to this frame and just hold it on there. So right now this frame is just sitting on here but once we cut this hopefully the pads will fall right in place. The stanchions were cut but now the weight of the back end of the frame was making it very difficult to keep the front pads in their proper mounting locations. So we grabbed the main halyard, attached it to the frame, and used the winch to winch it up slightly to take some of the weight off the back end. This would allow us to see if all the pads were going to hit in the exact spot they needed to. Is 
that where it is on the other side? Right at the non-skid line? Um, dead on, dude. It fit perfectly. Every pad hit exactly where it was supposed to and sat at the exact angle, and our measurements couldn't have been any better. Backstays fit right through the center of the hardtop, and we can already envision how the solar panels and hardtop are going to mount. We temporarily screwed it down and then trimmed up the back stanchions and put some brackets on so we could fasten it to the frame. Lastly, we tested the strength. Roth jumped on it and started shaking it around like he was a heavy dinghy, and sure enough, this thing didn't budge. Although it hasn't passed the windage test, the strength of the structure gave Roth and I a major sense of relief, and we could now finally get some sleep at night knowing we were going to have one of the coolest hardtops on the seven seas. Incredible. Join us next week as we mount this massive hardtop and install all of our solar panels. Also, we are heading to the Annapolis Boat Show from October 12th to the 15th. We have a discount code down below that you can use to get your tickets. And Young Cruisers is hosting another award ceremony, and we really need your vote. Last year we got Best Emerging Channel, and this year we would like to get Best YouTube Channel overall. And we are not one of the channels with the most amount of subscribers, so we need each and every one of you to vote for us. You can also find the link down below to do that. It only takes a couple clicks and we would appreciate it so much. We are also hosting a patron-only meetup while we are there, and we cannot wait to see you guys and have a couple drinks. And speaking of, we want to give a huge thank you to all of our patrons. Your support means everything to us and we really couldn't do without you guys. And of course, an extra big shout out to our upper tier patrons who get a plaque on the spirit animal. Your continued support means so much to us. And also, if patron isn't your thing, you can also like, share, and subscribe to this channel. So hit that subscribe button and we will see you next week.